what I want to do now, I want to play the song that nobody in this room has heard yet. This is a song that Karen Taylor Good wrote. She has given me permission to use it for the documentary. The name of the song is, It's What I Do. And that's going to be the name of the documentary. What I'd like to do right now, we're going to put the words up on the screen and the monitors around the room. I want you to watch the words and you will understand all about why we musicians do what we do. Ladies and gentlemen, it's what I do. nothing more than writing a great song and then going into the studio and watching the magic that happens when other talented people put their Still recording, or do you want to start a new one? Spark into it. Do you want to start it it's over? It's magic. It's like giving birth to beautiful babies all the time and without the pain. <laughs> Except the pain comes after, I guess. <laughs> so, so I get a call uh, while I was at the Kerbal Folk Festival, and this is what they said. They said, okay. We're flying, they're flying you to New York. The, the head of Atlantic Records has fallen in love with your voice. He's going to make you the Carol King of the 90s. And you're going to fly up here, and we're going to, oh, this is it. So, oh my God, I thought, oh my, this is it, this is it. You know, I just hit the big time. And I flew up to New York, and they met me, you know, with a little sign at the airport, the little limo guy, and uh, put me up in a fabulous hotel. And then we had lunch, the A&R person and my CSEC rep and I, and she said, this is the way it's going to be. He has a big grand piano in his office. You're going to go in and just sit down and play every song because your song made Arif Mardin cry. And it made Amit Ergut cry. And they're so excited that they're going to make you the Carol King of the 90s. I walked into his office for my appointment, and he took one look at me. And I saw it in his face. He thought I was too old. Now, mind you, I was 40. But he had made up an 18-year-old face to go along with the voice that he heard on the cassette that he loved. So uh, it was a very short meeting. He did not have me play any songs. And at the end of the meeting, he said, who does your publishing? And I said, um, I do. So well, do you want a publishing deal? And I said, sure. He said, well, my friend, the head of Warner Chapel Publishing, happens to be in town. Let's call and see if he has an appointment available. 
He was leaving back from New York the next morning. Because this is his friend, the head of Atlantic Records, he said, yes, I'll take this at one appointment. And uh, long story longer, <laughs> the CEO of Warner Chapel heard my songs and said, oh my God, I've got to sign you. And that was that. That's one door slamming shut painfully, and yet God opening up another one. Through the back window of our 59 wagon, I watched my best friend Jamie slip further away. I kept on waving till I couldn't see her. Then through my tears I asked again why we couldn't stay. Mama whispered softly, time will ease your Life's about changing, nothing ever stays the same. And she said, how can I help you to say goodbye? It's okay to hurt, and it's okay to cry. Come, let me hold you, and I will try. How can I? It's hard to stop being a musician because of, of the addiction that is, it has with me. I don't know about everybody else, but I can't get up in the morning without going out and start either recording or playing or practicing for four hours a day. Just to, uh, I love it. Being at the team club was fantastic. It was probably one of the greatest things that ever happened in my life is to work it along with, with my brother. And that, you know, help him run it. And, and uh, just hated to see it die. The thrill of the, getting that thrill of like, hey, we're going to be like the Beatles if we were to leave this place. Because everywhere we went, we were getting that reception, with, you know, with the people. I mean, I really like UJs too. That was fantastic, you know, in Hollywood. We had people waiting in line, and just, you know, it was like, uh, that was our show place. Nobody could have beat us there. We had, and we had the people. They would be in line around the block to get in. And uh, we were the top band in Hollywood. I just loved it. El Paso, I always have. If anybody loved it, I did. And, and I, if I could have the house, I want to hang on to it where all, all of it started. It's really hard to not hang on to that house. And, uh, a lot of memories.